Welcome to Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio News Talk 1180 with your host Clay Kerner and I'm Marty Pay. Clay, we've had an incredible month on our show. Uh, we started out with uh, Bakersfield Rescue Mission and then we had Tobin Smith from Fox Bulls and Bears and Kathy Abernathy who's the political consultant's consultant. And next week we've got uh, Mike Reagan, President Reagan's son, talking about his new book. But this week we're taking a little bit of a different path. Exciting one. Yes, we are. We're talking to an author that has written two of my favorite books, books that leave many questions that each of us as individuals have to answer for ourselves. The books are Amazing Grace and uh, the second book, which Amazing Grace, which actually became a movie, a very successful movie a few years ago. And his current book is another New York Times bestseller, Bonhoeffer, Pastor, Martyr, Prophet, and Spy. And the author is Eric Metaxas. Eric, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Well, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Eric, Clay and I were across the street at a Marie Callender's a few hours ago doing a little show prep, and there was a pastor's meeting there, and they saw the book sitting on the uh, table there. And as they're walking by, they're telling us they had read the book, or most of us were in the, of them were in the process of reading the book. So it, uh, it's a very, very popular book. Well, no one is more surprised than I am, I have to say, uh, because the book is, well... For, for those unfamiliar with it, let me just say the, the brief version is that it's a biography of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a pastor and theologian during Nazi Germany. Uh, he stood up to Hitler. He was a big voice against the Nazis, and he was killed by the Nazis in 1945. I first heard the story in 1988. I was totally staggered by it. Never thought I'd write a biography. And when I started writing the biography after writing Amazing Grace, um, I thought it would be about the same length, maybe, you know, two or three hundred pages long, but it ended up being a much longer book. And when I was done with it, I thought, well, this is for history. This is not, uh, oh, maybe it's not going to be a page turner. Maybe a lot of people aren't going to buy it, but I want it to be accurate. I want to do justice to this incredible man and to this incredible story. But the outpouring of affection for this guy, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and the, the, the interest in my book has been absolutely stunning. I can't even, you know, it's a hard thing for an author because you, you dream of that, but to have it actually happen, you don't think it'll happen. But this book has sold uh, well over 100,000 copies, and as you know, because you have a copy of it, it's a hardcover, almost 600 pages long. It's a German theologian, but I, I really think the story of Bonhoeffer is so compelling. There, I can't think of anybody who sort of embodies authenticity it's you know you, you realize there's a hunger in our culture in our jaded cynical confused culture for authenticity for a guy who lived what he believed and i the, the the number of people who have said to me they're reading the book or they have a friend reading the book it's just as i say it's it's a dream it's a dream come true and not just because i want to sell books because i have to pay the rent but because it's my dream that people in America would encounter Bonhoeffer, because I think it'll, it'll literally change people's lives, and it'll certainly change the church, which gets us into the whole conversation mm -hmm. of Bonhoeffer and the church. But, uh, yeah, I, that's my long-winded way of saying I'm thrilled. <laughs> well, it's incredible, because the book does does ask a lot of questions as individuals that I'd like to get into with you, but this book is more popular than Amazing Grace was? Much more popular, much more. Really? I mean, Amazing Grace probably sold 25,000 uh, copies in hardcover, and it's half the size. This book has sold well over 100,000 copies uh, by now. It's, wow. it's amazing. It's probably more like 140,000 copies. Yeah, th those, are, those are big numbers for, uh, for somebody like me. Of course, nothing could compare to the VeggieTales sales that uh, I was affiliated with VeggieTales for the years. But, you know, I don't get royalties for that, Marty, so who cares? <laughs> well, be before we get into Bonhoeffer, I want to talk a little bit. I want to do a little background. I want to talk a little bit about some of your other books because there's a common thread here. Um, you did Amazing Grace, but I, I didn't realize till this morning when I was just looking at your list of books, you did the book on Squanto. Hard to believe I'm the same person, isn't it, Marty? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe. Shocking. Perhaps I'm not. Who's to say? I think... Um, I've had a strange career. Anybody who wants more specific information, of course, please go to my website. If you can spell my name, it's ericmetaxas.com, E-R-I-C-M-E-T-A-X-A-S.com. If you can't spell my name, it's still ericmetaxas.com. So uh, if you go to my website, you can get the whole picture. But I've had a very uh, dramatically eclectic and varied career. I've written over 30 children's books. I wrote for Veggie Tales. Anybody uh, who knows VeggieTales, loves VeggieTales. What a privilege it was for me. I did a lot of work for VeggieTales. 
and a lot of other children's books. And Squanto, you just mentioned um, this incredible Thanksgiving story. Another one of these. I, I love when I when I when I bump into a story that is really stunning. I say the whole world needs to know about this, and mm-hmm. I've got to write about it. So I wrote a book called Squanto and the Miracle of Thanksgiving. And if you can believe it, this is true. Uh, that you know, three thousand word story or twenty five hundred word story children's book gave me the confidence that I could write a biography of William Wilberforce called Amazing Grace, which you just referenced, mm-hmm. uh, because I thought, you know, I've never done anything like this before, but then I thought, well, when I was writing the story of Squanto, it's a simple matter of research, telling the story, uh, you know, being r- responsible to the facts. Don't, don't gild the lily, simply tell the story as it happened. It's an amazing story, and I thought, if I can only do that now in 100,000 words, it's a little bit longer than 2,000 words words, but I think if I could just do the same thing times 50, I can write Amazing Grace. And I did, and writing Amazing Grace gave me the confidence that I could write Bonhoeffer, which is 200,000 words, so it gets a little silly, but that's that's actually the course of my strange career. Now, you're not telling us that your next book's going to be 1,200 pages. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, (laughs) Absolutely not. I have to tell you, this book bled me white. It just was a huge effort. I have never worked so hard in my life. That is true. I don't ever want to work that hard again, ever. It was really painful, really very, very difficult. But uh, uh, to get to dramatic, I have to say I felt God gave this to me as an assignment. I don't say that lightly. Anybody who knows me or has watched me on uh, YouTube or whatever, the, I, I, I don't. I don't get over serious very often. I'm always kidding around. But when it came to this project, to this assignment, I really felt that this was a a call from God to do this. And I I simply don't say that lightly, nor would I uh, counsel others to say such things lightly. It's a big statement to say that God led me to do something. But in this case, I I think that actually happened, and I've got anecdotes to back it up, but Mm -hmm. not for today, perhaps. I I believe that. We're talking to uh, Eric McTaxis, the author of Bonhoeffer, Pastor, Martyr, Prophet, Spy, and Amazing Grace. Uh, you know, VeggieTales, it's interesting. I didn't realize you were involved in VeggieTales, but I, I know with my kids, they're all growing up now. They, uh, they, the last part of their adolescence, they were involved in VeggieTales, and it's, it's a fantastic program. Well, if you dig deeply, you'll find out that I've been involved in everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, a- anything that you find, I've been involved in one way or another. It Actually, like it, it is strange. I mean, over the course of my adult life, uh, I have written a lot of humor, uh, people don't realize that I'm, you know, some people think of me as a humorist or a comedian. I'm, I'm really, uh, that's sort of something I do. Uh, I also have written children's books, and I've also written these adult books. I've written a number of books called Everything You Always Want to Know About God But We're Afraid to Ask, uh, which are books of Christian apologetics with some humor. But mm-hmm. I really feel um, I like to have fun, and I like to do different, uh, different kinds of things. So, yeah, so I've written a lot of humor, written a lot of children's books, and I've written a lot of, <laughs> a lot of yeah. serious uh, sort of faith-oriented sure. adult books, and well, who knows what I'll what I'll do next. Let, let's start with Squanto, go to Amazing Grace, and then go to Bonhoeffer, because you know once we touch on Bonhoeffer, I think that's where we're going to end up because it's such an amazing, amazing story and book. But and we've got the full four hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, Eric. I was looking at my notes this morning. I, I think we could do four hours and have an excellent conversation. Yeah, about, unfortunately, uh, we we could, and yeah. then we'd say we're sorry, we're out of time. Yeah, because exactly. It's, there's, there's so much there, but actually, I'll say this too that. If folks want to see the, the full, I give a, a speech on Bonhoeffer, and that's all on my website, which again is ericmetaxas.com. I did, I was on Glenn Beck, I've been on NPR, I've been on uh, um, C SPAN, yes. and then there's a speech I gave at Socrates in the city here in Manhattan. That's another mm-hmm. thing that I do. So, so if people sort of want the longer version of what we're going to touch on, they can find most of it. Um, at my website, and there's a Harper's interview and a mm-hmm. National Review. It, left and right, uh, you name it, we've, mm-hmm. we've, we've been there. But but anyway, yes, please, yeah. uh, let's talk about Squanto. Definitely. Well, before we get there, another place, the place I found you was on Facebook, so your your Facebook page is excellent because you break down your different interviews with different people, and that's a great place for people yeah. to find out more about you and your books and, and, yes. and the different events. And, I, and for the record, Marty, the, I, those... Uh, I have 4,200 Facebook friends, and I want you to know that they are all personal, close friends of mine. Well, that's why I'm one of your guests on, right. uh, on Facebook. I, I know yes. that going I'm in. very close with all 4,200. Yeah, 4,200 of your closest friends. I, that I, can't have I, them I are here now. That. We're, we're going we're gonna to have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Squanto. Tell us briefly the story of Squanto. It's, it's an incredible story. 
Well, that, that's another one. I was on CNN talking about that, which was a crazy thing. But it's one of those stories that you say, is this really true? This can't be true, because if it's true, it's a miracle. Well, I did the research, and it's true. Uh, in a nutshell, very quickly, uh, the pilgrims land in 1620. We know the story. And they're dying. They're dying. They followed God. And they're dying. And they're crying out to God and saying, God, help us. Did you send us here or didn't you? And why are you letting us die? And out of the woods walks an Indian. Now, this is Massachusetts, 1621. An Indian walks out of the woods speaking perfect English. His name is Squanto. The backstory on his life is he was kidnapped by traders who were coming down the Massachusetts coast in 1608. They took him to Spain. Uh, he was then transported to England, where he lived for five years, learned to speak English, and then finally gets back to Massachusetts. Th this is so crazy. We don't have time to go into it. We could, we could do easily 40 oh, minutes yeah. on Squanto. Yeah. But I said, th this is one of these insane but true stories from history. Every American needs to know this story. And I've read some other versions of Squanto where they don't seem to see that it's a miracle. They, they kind of act like it's some weird coincidence. Sure. It's the most ridiculous miracle I, I've ever seen, and it's mm -hmm. at a seminal moment in American history. We need to know this, that at, at, this, at, this, uh, at this foundational moment in our history as a people, an out-and-out -out miracle of God happened. I mean, you might want, not want to acknowledge it, but I don't, I don't know how else to see it. You just mm -hmm. look at the simple facts, you look at what the Pilgrim Fathers themselves wrote about it, don't take my word for it, take their word for it. It was, it was an incredible thing. And Squanto effectively helped them to survive. I mean, mm -hmm. you, when you read, uh, he taught them everything because he had grown up in the area where they had landed. Mm -hmm. Coincidence? You know, I, I hardly think no, it's possible I, I totally uh, agree the whole you. thing to be coincidence. But that's, mm -hmm. it is an amazing story, and mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot on the Internet if you go to my website that I posted on that, too. It's just, I really think every American, especially every American child, uh, needs to know the story of Squanto. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Eric, we're going to pick up there in a moment. This is Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio, News Talk 1180.